What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is The Locker Room. Episode 11 of Season 6 of the GBA, the San Francisco Giantes are going up against Coop and his team, the Utah Jasmine. Uh, if you guys don't know Coop, uh, good. Don't subscribe to him. Uh, his words, not mine. And uh, we're going to go over the teams that we're looking at for the matchup that we're going to have a little bit later today. Uh, I have not slept in 36 hours. <laughs> I just got off doing a, a double. Came for, I went in to work for the night shift because they had too few nurses there. And then stayed to work for the day shift because they had too few nurses there. And... <laughs> That's a very, let me tell you guys, it's not hard to work 16 hours. It's hard to work knock and uh, knock being nocturnal. And then AMG, why am I talking about this? You guys don't care. Let's talk Pokemon. Uh, on the left, you'll see my drafted 11 Pokemon. Entei, Latias, Cresselia, Zapdos, Nidoking, Mega Absol, Granbull, Metagross, Miss Magius, Ditto, and Regirock. On the right, you will see... His uh, 11 Pokemon, I've ordered them somewhat by the likelihood that he brings them, but with uh, a little exception I'll explain uh, in just a second. He's got Clefable, Staraptor, Mega Gallade, Greninja, Weezing, Gliscor, Magnezone, Agron, Claydol, Empoleon, and Sableye. So, um... The first four that you see, Clefable, Staraptor, Mega Gallade, and Greninja, are all I think very likely brings for him. The Clefable, almost assuredly, he's brought it every single game. It's a great fairy type. Fairy does fine against my team. It's bulky. It's a pivot. It has a great move pool. Uh... It can be a win condition offensively by going calm mind setup. It can be unaware to take away that kind of potential. Just a good all-around Mon. There's no way he doesn't bring it. I'm, I'm confident in that. Staraptor, it's very hard to deal with. It's a great wall breaker. Uh, and given my team, he doesn't necessarily know what it will and won't beat. Uh, I think he brings it. Um... Choice Scarf sets typically run Intimidate to be scouts, and they run a lot of U-Turn. I don't know that he needs that for me necessarily, so I'm predicting a Choice Band, Reckless, Adamant, uh, which can break through a whole lot of my team. The Mega Gallade, uh, it's walled by Cresselia, but last time he brought a Hypnosis set that would have done really well for him um, in some circumstances. I think it's a pretty likely bring. Uh, maybe Greninja's more likely than that, though. I think he brings Greninja. It's his only water type. It does well against my team. Dark is very effective against my team. Uh, so I think, I do think he brings that. The Weezing and the Gliscor. I don't think Weezing is more likely than Gliscor, but this is where, in my assessments of how our last game went, for those of you that don't remember, weren't here, or forgot, there's a spider web there, uh, or don't remember, or whatever. Last game we played i won six to zero in what was a, a good mixture of uh, rolls going my way a couple predictions going my way and uh, a bit of luck in that he missed two hypnosis <laughs> hypnosis like he's doing it multiple anyway uh i don't think him landing that hypnosis would have changed the outcome of the match but it probably wouldn't have been a 6-0 it probably would have been a 5 or a 4-0 had he landed one of those hypnosis, because I think Mega Galley would have gotten a kill or two. The reason I'm pointing this out is, I think, looking back at that match, Entei was a too big of a problem for him, and playing Entei out a lot made it very difficult for him, and so I think he wants to bring a defensive Mon to answer Entei. Um, Weezing is a good Pokemon for doing that. Gliscor is probably better and good against a lot of the rest of my team. It uh, it can have U-Turn, it can have Knock Off, it can be very effective for that. So I think one of those two Pokemon come. I don't think both of them come, and I guess I don't think Weezing is more likely either. I really should have organized this a little bit better, but I'm not going to do anything about it now because we got a battle really soon because I need to sleep. Uh, we've got Magnezone and Agron, and just like I said the first time we battled, 
I think one of them comes because they are also phenomenal wall breakers. Uh, I think Magnazone is what he brought last time. He did very well against my team. But last time I had Manaphy and I don't have Manaphy anymore. So that makes Magnazone a little bit worse off. The problem with Magnazone is that it has to run Scarfed if it wants to outspeed some of my quick threats and get kills that way. But if it does that, it's not strong enough to break my walls. If it runs the spec set to break the walls, it can get easily revenge killed by my faster mon, and it's pretty easy for me to determine which set it is based on the damage it outputs. Agron is a very similar, in a very similar boat. Um, Head Smash, it wrecks shop, but it's very weak to fighting, and it's very easy to find ways to take advantage of it if it's a choice banded set. And outside of choice band, it is walled pretty effectively by Cresselia and some of the other Pokemon on the team. Claydol and Empoleon are both of his hazard um, hazard control Pokemon. Empoleon does okay against my team. Claydol doesn't really do great against my team in general. But if he really wants to play the hazard control game, they're there. Sableye, uh, just like last time, I don't see why he brings it. My offensive Pokemon can beat it down. It can throw statuses around i guess but uh i mean burn is resisted by entei entei is a relatively good switch in there it might not want to get toxic but then again i have nitto king for that so let's go over you can see in the bottom left of the screen but i'll go over on the main viewer uh, in the center of the video now the pokemon i'm bringing this week we got zap zap zapdos ddg the chrysalia decisions the entei remix the ditto prince the nitto king and tintin the metagross making his first appearance let's go through the sets really quickly here zap zap is pretty much the same set he was last time i fought against this guy but uh u-turn instead of volt switch now main reason being that glyscore makes this set very difficult to work in my favor uh it makes it hard for me to gain momentum with the volt switch and the volt switch isn't on there for me to put out heavy damage it's it's there for momentum and if i want that momentum I want U-Turn, and U-Turn is still pretty good against things like the... Uh, the thing is, is that in general, I don't ever think I'm going to get a super effective hit with the Volt Switch. It's resisted hits against things don't really matter because they usually can just recover them off. And if I'm going to be making the prediction that I can get a super effective stab attack off, it's going to be because I clicked Thunderbolt to go for a kill. So that's the reason for Zap Zap, having the set he's running. Heat Wave is great against the Steel types. Um, very good for me to help against the Magnazone and Hidden Power Ice for the Glyscore. Uh, we have DDG here running Moonblast, Calm Mind, Substitute Moonlight. Uh, the Calm Mind is to protect me from getting toxic in a tank versus tank matchup against things like Clefable. I should be able to outspeed a Clefable, get up a, or get up a Substitute. If it's unaware, that's going to be something I have to scout for pretty quickly. I am a little bit concerned about a setup unaware Clefable, but I uh, should be able to get maybe a burn off on it with uh, DDG or something along those lines. So, uh, so that's the point of DDG. It can find relatively easy opportunities to set up a substitute and then go for uh, some calm mind. So, might even might do better than I expect this week. We'll have to see. Decisions is here. Sacred Fire Extreme Speed Iron Head Stone Edge with a Choice Band. I really wanted to give him a different item, but I need the Choice Band in order to two-hit KO the Glyscore. And otherwise, the Glyscore completely walls Decisions, and with any amount of speed investment, can actually two-hit KO me before I can get a two-hit KO on him if he's going for an offensive variety uh, with Earthquake. So I needed that. Also, um, I needed I need to be able to hit wheezing as hard as possible and i don't have the opportunity to set up really against the glyscore because of the super effective earthquake it's it's too difficult for me to get a setup uh decisions going this week and there's not really any items that benefit me like a shaka great i take a little bit less damage from the earthquake but uh, a glyscore can still stall me out so i i needed the choice band in order to keep the pressure going with decisions this week we got Remix. Remix uh, is taking the place of Baby Spice, the Manaphy, who we traded away. 
uh, and is my primary switch into the Greninja. He resists all of Greninja's stab, and typically Greninja will run Ice Beam as coverage. He resists all three of those moves. The fourth move could be Gunk Shot, could be U-Turn, which would hit me super effectively, but it wouldn't want to hit KO me, so it makes Remix a really good switch into Greninja. So that's the primary reason for that choice scarf, just to ensure that if he does have U-Turn and doesn't go for it and he's an expert belt variety, I can get my U-Turn off first. That also means that I can revenge kill any of his potential setup mons. So uh, that's the purpose of the choice scarf on that. Prince, the modest Life Orb Sheer Force with some HP investment, a decent amount of HP investment. Uh, I'm here to, with the speed tier to outspeed a Clay Doll and his base 60s, barring very high speed investment on their behalf. Earth Power uh, is his primary stab. He's got a lot of steals, so it'll, it'll help against all of those. Sludge Wave is secondary stab. It hits neutral for most things. It's not really that I'm aiming for a super effective hit with that. It's just a nice neutral uh, mix-up that hits things uh, very effectively. And then Ice Beam is there for the Gliscor who walls the Earth Power Sludge Wave variety. Gliscor kind of a, an issue just in general. So I like to try and pack ice on as many things as possible. And Tintin is going to be my primary switch into... Tintin actually becomes a lot of things. Before, this slot was held by Regirock. And Regirock was only good against the, the Staraptor. Now, one thing about this being a rematch is that he knows now that that's what Regirock was for. And so... It's very easy for him to bring shenanigans on the Staraptor to break through that. One thing, for example, being the close combat, uh, actually two hit KO is Regirock. So if he's figured that out, he might bring that and then Regirock's not a good answer. With this setup, it's a very mixed defensive set. As you can see, I'm impish with some defense investment, some special defense investment and an assault vest. I put max into HP and a little bit into attack, running Meteor Mash, Hammer Arm, Earthquake and Ice Punch. This coverage allows me super effective hits against almost everything on his team. The Clefable cannot handle a Meteor Mash. It can't Toxic me, which is nice. Uh, I can Ice Punch the Staraptor for a two-hit KO. I can Earthquake the Gallade. I can Hammer Arm the Greninja. The Weezing is... An annoyance but I could Meteor Mash potentially set up on it. The Gliscor I can two hit KO with an Ice Punch. The Earthquake will hit the two steel, the three steel types he's got super effectively. Hammer Arm will also do that and both of those moves are four times super effective against the Agron. The Meteor Mash will two hit KO the Sableye unless he burns me which is possible and likely if he does bring the Sableye. And then the clay doll is just going to sit there looking like an idiot. I can super effectively hit it with an ice punch. So that is the purpose of Tintin. It becomes a very good switch into the Magna Zone. Because if the Magna Zone is Magnet Pull instead of Analytic, I don't really care. I can kill it with an Earthquake and he cannot two hit KO me thanks to the Assault Vest. Uh, if he is Specs variety, Specs non-Analytic won't kill me. A Specs Analytic, if I switch in with Tintin... It would kill me, however, I will then know it's Specs, and only the Specs Analytic Thunderbolt can two-hit KO Tintin, which means I know what he's going for next turn, I can switch into Prince and take some massive momentum that way. So, it's a big scouting thing for me there, it helps with that. I can actually survive a lot of the hits from Greninja, except for a Life Orb Dark Pulse, so... And that's a likely move that he does click on me, but that's why I got Ditto there. But it does make me useful in that regard. Good switch into the Clefable. Uh, good switch into a lot of his team. So it will kind of become a, a useful pivot for me um, a lot of the time. So, And he does have a good amount of offensive investment, so he can threaten out some on that way. So that's going to be my team for the week. Hope you guys enjoy. What do you guys think? Anything you would bring? Anything you should I should have done different? Uh, in my setup this week. Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Lita Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time.